Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and now this is part 7 of this sound quality in car series. If you haven't seen the first 6 yet guys, then please go to the playlist and then click on the SQ in cars. Then you can see, you know, how we are trying to achieve sound quality in cars in a simple way. This part is the, yeah, probably the most important one. And for this reason, I'm going to split it up. I don't want to make a super long video because, you know, talking about speakers, pff, Jesus, you know, I could I could talk for an hour, but no one wants that. In average, people watch my videos for five minutes. So realistically, I know that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to split it up. And first, we are going to talk about OEM, OEM solutions where people cannot use any custom locations, can't do custom fabrication. They have to stick to what's given by the manufacturer. Um, nowadays, obviously, it's getting more and more difficult to, to buy cars with ideal speaker locations. Manufacturers put speakers to different locations based on, on very different um, reasons, but for them, you know, most of the times it's, it's really down to where they can just get the speakers out of the way so they can rather make the car more practical. They can make a bottle holder on the door card or similar things. And it really doesn't help us who want great sound quality. Um, there are a few cars nowadays, rather the, the popular cars, which don't necessarily have bad, bad, bad platforms, but you have to be familiar with um, the characteristics, what you can do with those speaker locations. For instance, BMWs. Most BMWs now share the same platform when it comes to speaker locations. Um, they have an 8, 9, 9 inch um, kind of really flat driver, base driver underneath the seats. And we are going to cover roughly, you know, um, what the char characteristics are for those speaker locations. So they have a base driver under the seat, they have a 4-inch driver in the door card, which most of the times runs full range, so it doesn't really have a great detail if it's not a coax. Um, or they also have an additional tweeter in the sail panels. Um, you, can, you can do really well with those locations, actually, but you have to do what to do with it. Um, first of all, the base driver um, can only really play up to like 150, 160 hertz, and that's it. From that location underneath the seat, the seat filters what range it can play, and obviously the location is not the best either, but you can work around it and you can you can work with it really well. So if you run active, as you could see from previous series, um, we were talking about active systems having, um, you know, amplifier channels, enough amplifier channels running the drivers individually and having a DSP so you can control the response, you can control every single driver. Then the same way in a BMW, if you only use that drive underneath the seat up to like 150 hertz, you can, you can get away with many things. Um, but then obviously you cannot pair that with a 3-inch driver that's not going to play low enough to integrate it to the 8. So that's why the factory 4-inch location is not bad. It's a little bit low in the door card, but it, it, can, it can work okay. Um, and ideally, yes, you need a pair of tweeters as well in those cars in the sale panel if you want to keep it stock then you can have a freeway stock looking system and it can sound really good but the key is it must be active and must have a dsp and tune well then the new mercedes platform they have the mid base in the firewall in front of the pedals on driver's side and they have uh, one on well in some of them they have a base driver on the passenger side as well under like you know three four inch really thick foam under the glove box the same thing is happening over there those drivers cannot really play above 140, 50 hertz. So these solutions work rather like, you know, those are kick base drivers. They are not really mid base drivers. Um, so again, in those cars, you need at least a four inch mid range in order to integrate that base driver in that not really ideal location. Having said that in the, in the Mercedes, that location works really well because it's in, in, in the most um, kind of, okay, I'm putting it the wrong way, is the least resonant space in the car. Because if the firewall vibrates or, or rattles, then pff, you have big problems. So in that sense, the, the Mercedes location works really well. 
we built a, a car a year and a half ago uh, you can go to the description i add a link to that the mercedes uh, e-series e-series amg we built a year and a half ago and that worked out really well but we need a four inch driver um, to cover the response from like 150 hertz upwards then it worked fine but then it wasn't quite an oem solution because we had to do custom fabricated a pillars then of course you know people can ask you know why don't we try to buy cars which have ideal speaker locations what is an ideal speaker location right well for a mid-bass in most cases and when we, we talk about the ultimate solutions then the mid, the best location for a mid-bass would be in the kicks but pff, you can cannot find any car uh, with location like that um, so in that sense the Mercedes and the BMW location is not terrible and then actually I built a Kia again if you go to the description I added a link to that sorry where you can um, see how I created uh, enclosures underneath the seats the same way and I was using four inch drivers up on the dash and and that car worked superbly and that car was bought on purpose by the owner because the car had beautiful locations on the dash right on the dash on a really ideal angle for the mid-range and instead of you know trying to get a speaker on axis because most people think that if you put a speaker on axis in a on a in a car then you can get away uh with at you know as little amount of reflections as possible but um it's not the case even if you have drivers mid-range and suites of drivers in a car on axis you still have reflections you see in a box it's you know it's impossible to avoid it so in many cases if you're clever you can even use the reflection to your advantage if you have reflections anyway why wouldn't you use them most people don't even think about it and they think oh no no that's 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 not cool but in many cases if you have a mid-range location up on the dash do it do it first try it use the windscreen as your acoustic lens and it can work it can work absolutely fine of course again it needs a nice amount of eq in and you have to know how to do it well but it can it can work beautifully and um like in many toyotas uh lexus they have mid-range and tweeter drivers up on the the dashboard so instantly you have uh, an easier chance to create a stage that we were talking about in part one and two what we want to achieve um you can create a high stage because the drivers are not at your knee level um, they are up high already and um, it can work why wouldn't you i see many people with audis and they have enough space on the dash for a two inch driver why wouldn't you put a two inch wideband there but that you can play from like three 350 hertz upwards and in many cases if you select the, the right wideband driver it can play even tweeter less Many people don't even know what a wideband speaker is. Basically, you can see wideband speakers from 2 inch up to even 7 inch um, and they can run without a tweeter and they can cover the top end just, just as well as a tweeter in many cases. And those people who doubt it, um, I would suggest them to do a bit of research because some of the best cars uh, in the competition lanes actually are tweeterless. In Europe as well, there's a car who won the guy won the Euro finals, I don't even know how many times. You cannot count it, like six, seven times. And he runs seven inch drivers, tweet or less. Okay, fair enough. It's an extreme build. You, you cannot compare that to an OEM build. Um, custom dash. He uses actually three speakers, two seven inch drivers in the corner of the dash, um, and one subwoofer underneath the dash. But it's just an example. Um, or like in the US as well. Many guys won the world finals because you you know guys in the US you call it world finals. Um, some of the guys won with wide bands as well, like Matt Hall. He was using what five inch drivers, two to less, and he had four speakers in the car. Two of those up on the dash, and then two 12 inch uh, bass drivers in the kicks, as far as I remember. And you know it can work. So don't put wide bands away you know they can work really well so oem uh, is is tricky and of course you mustn't forget that in many cases you you may have really good speakers by the factory the system just sounds so shit because 
there's not enough processing power behind it and it's not tuned properly. Um, if you go to description, there's another video there I, I made a good while ago in a friend of mine's um, car, the Audi TT, where we just added uh, an amplifier, an h &L amplifier with built-in DSP and we were running the factory speakers, Bose speakers. Everyone hates them and I don't like them either. But having said that, many people were surprised to sat, sat in their car because they were like, bloody hell, you know, and using factory speakers. I'm like, yeah, but we have all the processing power behind it. And at least in most of the, most of the cases, the factory speakers are sensitive at least. So it's easy to get great output as well. Of course, you you have to think about you know how to make the environment for the speaker better, because in most cases speakers are indoors, the mid bass drivers, and you know the the whole door, the door card, everything rattles to hell. So you have to do sound treatment to it. You have to deaden uh, the sheet metal. You have to deaden the door cards. Do soundproofing just to create a better environment. But is it gonna be as good as, you know, um, if you think about a home hi-fi cabinet, some people say, oh, you can do it. You can do it with the door as well. You just have to work hard. But do you want to work that hard? Do you want to spend, you know, hundreds of hours to make a door rattle free? It's not going to happen. You still have moving parts in it. You have window mechanism, um, you have moving parts, and, and it's, it's, it's never going to be as solid. So for a mid-base driver, if you create a rigid platform then that's what you have to focus on even in an oem system and so the bmw platform underneath the seat is not bad although the the under seal can rattle a lot or the side skirt in one one case we had to take the side skirt off the car and we had to treat that and put it back it was crazy but it was rattling so loud outside even at like one third of the the output level that it doesn't matter how nice the car sounded inside if the guy was driving on the street people would be like what the hell is going on there why is it rattling that much so it's tricky um but you can you can go far if you if you select the right car actually uh with the right locations and um yeah you know i could drag this part as well for ages um but probably i just stop here because then in the next part we we want to step one step above when we can do let's say oem plus when people can do custom apulas for mid-range and tweeters or find a custom location for the mid-range or do something about the mid-base driver in the car and then probably in the third video talking about speakers we're gonna cover the extremes when you know you can do anything you like and then we can talk about the crazy shit you know where 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 do you want to really you know put a speaker to get the best out of it because at the end of the day what you hear in a car is going to be down to the installation and the location of the driver probably this is what i should have said right at the beginning of this video and most of you now won't even hear it and see it because pff, you probably left the video after three minutes um but um yeah we have to split it up otherwise it would be just way too long and the next video is actually i may jump in the current project car uh, that you might have seen already many videos of the extreme sound quality build uh, which is not the best example to show right now but when we get to the third part of this series then it will make absolute sense because you will realize that even cheap speakers can sound fabulous in a car if they are installed at the right place and the right way um so guys let me know what you think uh, what you want to hear in the f upcoming videos about speakers um I don't want to go into crazy detail and sorry sorry guys if, if you really want to hear the tiniest little details about speaker manufacturing what to look out for how to select a given driver what brands to choose i can i can cover it up to a certain percentage but it's impossible to cover everything you have to do your own research as well or you have the option to drop me a pm and we can find you know um a time for you you can book a time and we can talk about your situation because I know that you, you you are probably, you might be in the middle of the world. You have no chance to get any help from a dealership or anyone reputable. And I really appreciate all the messages I get from you guys, but it, it's getting more and more difficult to answer everyone. But I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to find exclusive time with everyone. And then, you know, I can help all of you to get along with your projects. 
Um, guys, feel free to share this video, feel free to comment, even those who don't like this video, especially you, let me know what your problem is and why you give me a dislike. I'm interested, you know, that's the only way to improve. And um, hopefully I can deliver the next video very, very soon. We have to speed things up, I promise that now. So guys, uh, hopefully I can talk to you very soon. Take care.